My name is Di Langford, I live in Brighton and I'm an audio describer. I began my career as an actor. I worked in rap and um, at Chichester Festival Theatre, I did a year at the National Theatre and I've done a lot of work um, around the country in different theatres. I started to do audio description um, when I was working for the RNIB as a talking book reader and um, the RNIB decided that they were going to start describing films and they were uh, described onto video. And this eventually led on to, uh, I began doing the Harry Potter films and um, the first one I did was recorded on video. So I wrote it and I actually did the voiceover. Subsequently, films are now, um, they're recorded by commercial companies and there are a, a available, the description is available on DVDs. When you first started doing the Harry Potter films, um, the first three were only recorded onto video, so that if you buy a box set now of the Harry Potter films, you'll find that the first three do not have audio description, so unfortunately you'll never actually um, introduce to the characters. And we did talk to Warner Brothers about that, hoping that they would be able to, after all this time, maybe put the description on, but it doesn't look as if that's going to happen. But I believe there are ways in which visually impaired people are very clever with uh, technology and have probably found the description somewhere else. Um, now, what's your own definition of audio description? What does it mean and who is it for? It's for people who are visually impaired in some way, not necessarily completely blind, but have some sort of um, sight problem. And it's a way in which they can enjoy theatre as sighted people do. A lot of sighted, uh, a lot of, I'm sorry, a lot of visually impaired people go to the theatre anyway, and they will find by the end that there are perhaps certain things that they've missed, and they might be asking their companion to explain to them what's going on, um, much to the annoyance of other people in the auditorium. This way, because they're wearing a headset, the only person who can hear it is themselves and the other visually impaired people in the audience and so it's not interfering with anyone else's enjoyment but it is enhancing theirs because um, instead of just hearing the dialogue they know if a gun's being shot they know who's actually got it in their hand and who they're aiming it at those sort of things are the sort of things that you, you don't necessarily pick that up from the dialogue and so what we do is enhance their enjoyment by helping them to um, understand the story and what difference in genre there is between uh, film and the theatre when you are an audio describer? Ah, when you're an audio describer with film, because it's going to be recorded, you know that it's never going to alter. Once it's there, it's there, because that film will never change. If you're doing theatre, it will depend a great deal on the performance. When we see a performance for the first time, it could be at a dress rehearsal, when there might be some hesitation and there'll be longer between what actors are saying. By the time we actually come to describe it, which will be into further into the run, they will al already be um, very familiar with it and much easier with it. So we'll have less time in between the dialogue to put our, our description in because um, they'll be picking up the cues much faster. We usually do the description with two colleagues who listen to each other and give each other the notes so that by the time we do it the following day, um, we're a bit closer to what the actors are doing. What are the essentials of an audio described script? How do you organize the work? Uh, how many times do you have to watch a piece, if it's theater or the film, to have it complete and ready? You have to watch it as long as you need to. I mean, people often, often say, how long does it take to do a description? And what I would say is it takes as long as it takes because it depends. And when you're doing a film, for instance, a battle scene with a lot going on, you have to play it backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards, a long time and it can take an hour to describe a minute of something on film. Obviously you're not going to get anything that's quite as complicated on um, on the stage, although sometimes there will be a lot of people, um, but you somehow find a way of deciding, even amongst all that mayhem going on, where the, fo where the focus should be, where the main character is, what the main character is doing in that battle scene. That's for film. And the same, in a way, it's the same for theatre, except that, um, well, if it's a fight, for instance, if Hamlet's fighting Laertes, it will always be the same. 
So it's very unlikely that that will change. So there will always be certain things in a theatre production that will stay the same, particularly that. And also, opera stays the same because um, the music guides what's happening and um, is the same for ballet too. What are the essential skills for the good Aldi describer? <clears throat> when I was first, um, when I started to do audio description, as a talking book reader for the uh, RNIB, they approached some of the readers to ask if they'd be interested in doing it, and they asked for people who had um, a skill at writing, um, a reasonable voice, um, and often people who work for the RNIB as a talking book reader have been actors, so they are familiar with styles of theatre. And, um, and that is always helpful. Most of the uh, audio describers I, that I know have some background in theatre, either as an actor or maybe as a stage manager, but they, they know how theatre works and that's very helpful. And um, what feedback do you get in the theatre and in the film from the users themselves? We don't get as much feedback as we'd like because by the time we come out of the theatre they've all gone home. Um, we describe from perhaps the lighting box, which will be right at the top of the theatre, at, at the very back. So by the time you come down all the stairs, um, everyone's gone home. So unless they write in, or you know someone who uses the, um, who actually uses the service, you don't get as much feedback as you would like. I work for Vocalize, and I know that we do get feedback from users, which comes into the office and is then sent out to the describers. So, audio description, is it a rewarding job for you? Would you recommend it to someone else? It's very rewarding, but I have to say, there aren't all that many opportunities for doing it. Um, most theatres now attempt to do audio description, but there are quite a lot of describers. So, whether I'm not saying you might like to train as an audio describer, but I'm not going to say you're going to get the work, because there's a limit to how much work's available. Most theatres do it now, and they often have their own describers theatre will have perhaps two people who do their descriptions regularly, so they wouldn't want me to come and do it. Um, sometimes the theatre describers are volunteers, but I work for Vocalise and we are paid. Di Langford, as always, a pleasure.